now. Oh, yes, thank you, thank you. So we have the usual suspects. Um, so welcome everybody. Um, this is a very, very strange week, as you know. I don't have a particular introduction to to the unfortunate uh, passing of, of Jim. We we have all done a, a bit of mourning by now, I suppose, when we learn the news. Um, and we have the, the memorial in Cozy. So I, I don't know. I don't think uh, we should have anything more. Because I mean, the gym was very dear to all of us, but there is really no point in in, in continuing. But if if any of you want to dedicate some words or something, like we, please feel free. We can spend a bit of time on that. Okay. Okay. So then. Let's start the uh, section for today. So for today, so first of all, let's start with the note. Well, as you know, let's be nice and so on. We all are very senior members of IDEA, so we all know what what's what's about. Um, for today, we have the, the two topics: the state list and um, resource directory. There is few issues left, and Michael has been very very nice to us uh, for for taking a bit of time uh, to conclude the few discusses uh, coming from ISG. So we are going to go through those first. I believe is because. Uh, Christian was setting up the computer and everything, but since you're in the call, uh, we, we might as well also start with RD. I mean, whatever you guys prefer. No preference here. Okay. Well, I mean, I have already the slide open, so we might as well just go with the stateless and I can present from here, and then later you can present RD on your machine, right? Yeah, that will be largely on issue tracker, but yes. Oh, okay. Then I can also, you know, act as a proxy. Cool. So, please, Michael, the floor is yours. Oh. Yeah, so the big, my big reason for doing this is that this document is holding up this cluster 310, which is full of roll and six dish documents, which I am an author. Um, and um, uh, so came to that. So uh, that link goes to the bunch of issues that I pulled out. And there are four poll requests relating this next, next slide, I guess. Oh, hit the hit the the big screen button so you can just hit down. You hit that that uh, thing on the side. There you go. Yeah. Um. So okay, so these are the issues. Um, as Carson, this is Carson's summary of the issues. Um, uh, the simplest ones is these are the ones that maybe we should say don't won't fix on. Um, and uh, I'm perfectly happy to do that. Uh, I don't know if that will fly well. Uh, I think number nine in particular, I think that's a still, I think we should just leave the, leave the text as it is. Uh, it says, look, ma, no state in the middle. And uh, I think that's elegant and cool. Um, if there's disagreement with the, with this, um, or we get some pushback from uh, area directors, then we could come back to them and decide that. But um, um Otherwise, I I'm happy to, to go with that list. Um, maybe uh, uh, some people need to look at them and convince themselves that that we shouldn't fix them. Next slide. Let's go to the ones that we will fix. Um, can you go into the poll request to that uh, poll eleven? And click on the files change tab. So basically what I've done is I've clarified that um, the AES, the suggestion of using uh, AES GCM is a suggestion. So uh, it was in the word uppercase recommended. It's now in lowercase recommended. Um, it's supposed to be. Um, and I see it there still is recommended uppercase. Why is it that way? It's supposed to be lowercase uh, based upon the um, fact that this is not normative. So yeah, that would be great if you could change that. Thank you. No, click on the lot, click on the, the instead of instead of writing that, Click on the, the, the icon next to the preview. No, you were in the right place. Click there. Yeah. 
plus. Yeah. Click on not preview. Go to the next icon, the next icon after preview to the right of preview. That one. Yeah. Now change it to say lowercase. And hit add single comment. That changes it right there. Um, so, uh, so then the other part was it said, May, I wonder if I've missed pushing some code here um, and didn't get it right because um, I thought I did this already. Um, so basically, it just says that uh, um, this is all a local decision. The only reason to use AESCCM is because uh, that's what you have in hardware. If you have something else in hardware, then you should use that. Um, and then the biggest con con the most of the text was about the fact that if you can't keep track of the nonces, then probably you should just uh, generate a new key uh, if you whenever you couldn't keep track of the nonces. And I, I guess that's the real question um, that needs to be thought about is whether or not um, these responses are going to have to outlive a case where a device is sleepy and doesn't and, and can't keep track of the nonces or not, if, if you understand what I'm saying. Do you want me to explain that more? Um, maybe Carsten, you can comment on the comment you left here to start the discussion. Yes, I'm trying to understand. Can you maybe show the whole thing? Okay, so let me let me maybe just start for everyone at the beginning. If you generate a key and you keep it for encrypting your state, um, and you go to sleep. Uh, sorry, and you use CCM mode, so you need a nonce that you should never repeat. Um, and you send a, a request, and then you go to sleep. Um, and then you wake up, and then you notice you didn't remember the nonce. So then the response would come back, and you might say, oh, um, I'm going to uh, I'm going to generate a new request, and I'll use the nonce again. So the issue is that you have to either... Remember the nonce when you go to sleep, so put it in NVRAM or something like that. Or each time you wake up, you have to generate a new key. Okay, so you could generate the key once at boot time, as Carson suggests, and then you have to keep track of the nonce uh, that goes on. And there's lots of ways to get the nonce for free if you have a clock that always increments or something like that. Um, and But if it turns out that you send a request and you expect the response before you go to sleep, then you could just generate the key each time. You don't have to, you don't have to keep track of any of that across uh, sleepy times. Uh, whether that's appropriate for your device, I don't know. It's hard to say. Does anyone have a comment, something to comment on this? Uh, I don't really have a... Um, my, uh, my take on this would be if, if the device can remember the key, um, then either it's it's committing that to, to, to some more even more persistent memory or it can... Um, or, or it's keeping it in NVRAM as well. And even if it's committing the key to some more persistent memory, then there's ways that we're using in OSCore um, to make sure that even in an uncontrolled shutdown, the nonces are not reused without hitting that memory every time you every time right. you take a number. So the same methods could just be used there. Generating a new key would certainly be an option, but I think this is some, primarily for cases where the device is coming completely fresh up and doesn't expect to right. to have any outstanding requests. So, so, so the, do the, people go ahead? The, the implementation approach is like this so if, if you do this for instance based on a sequence number um, then uh, once you have booted you see what's the old sequence number let's say that's 7000 mm -hmm. um, then you increment the sequence number to 8000 and write that to persistent memory and then you are yep. free to use 7000 to 8000 in your current 
uh, non, uh, in your current volatile state uh, without further touching um, the, the persistent state. And once mm -hmm. you have reached 8,000, you increment it to 9,000 and uh, use up uh, 8,000 to 9,000 and so on. And uh, we actually have written this up in one RFC already, which we probably need to find. And we might simply reference this here. I would love, that would be ideal. If we could just reference that, that would, that would uh, I think, be even better. Uh, that is OSCORE Appendix B1, um, one, I think. Definitely B1, probably B11. Okay, so I'll insert a reference somewhere to best practices for maintaining the nonce um, um, Jim, and maybe delete sorry. something. Uh, sorry. Uh, Michael, w would you like me to write some notes here at the bottom? Some yeah, that's that, or, that, or do you prefer that, the minutes? I mean, as you prefer. That, that what you just wrote would be just great. It's just great. Okay. So we can do yeah, that for a few things. V11 it is. V11 in 8613. 8613. Mm. Okay, so I'll revise that and send the text to the mailing list. Um, and, uh, oh, look, my suggest, I have my suggest, I can see my suggested changes already for some of this. It's weird. Um, so, okay, so I will um, take that out. Why can't you see them? Um, I don't know. Let me reload the page. <laughs> It's just weird. Well, files changed. Oh, cache invalidation. No, maybe it's just the way that you're looking. We're looking at it differently. Um, you have side to side, and maybe it doesn't show up if you go. The, the maybe it doesn't show up in side to side because you have side. You have left, right, diff, and I have in inside in, in uh, the other way. Uh, no, uh, it's the other way. Yeah. where do I change that? I don't know. Remember, I, I never use this. I had to start learning the web interface. I always use the uh, line. Um, I blame Dave Thaler for for making me use this because we. It's 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 much easier for group discussions to have that thing projected. Anyway, um, so this that's fine. Yeah, that's the right way. And then somehow you should see my suggestions already in there. Yeah, there they are. See, then you could. Oh no, yours are there, and mm -hmm. they're mine. The, no, there's yours, and then, that's weird. Mine no, don't show up. Yours. Weird, why don't show up? Are we in the same repo? Mm, yeah, we're totally well, in the same, yeah, we're totally in the same place. Stateless. Maybe they don't show up until I. Maybe I don't show, so uh, until I commit which, them. Did you did you make another branch or? No, maybe they don't show up until I um uh, I request changes and I can't I do that. Let's try that. See what happens. Hit to uh, reload on or hit files changed again. I just committed a change just for the fun of it. <laughs> now it appears. Here it is. Yeah, now it appears. There you go. Yeah, my, I, I guess it was private to me because I hadn't shared it. I hadn't committed it. Anyway, I'll go through this. If that's if that's if the rest of the text and the concept is okay, uh, mm -hmm. then I'll go through and create a final diff for that, um, and um, I'll reference that that piece you just suggested there, um, the OS core yeah. uh, part. Sounds good. Okay. So uh, next slide, I guess. Did I lose the slides? I don't know. You open a uh, tab. I don't think it opened a new tab on you. So it's somewhere in your history. Uh, screw. Uh, well, that's, well, sorry for the small format. Okay, so, so uh, next, yeah, one more slide. So that was eight. Go down a bit. So numbers, number ten and number uh, eight. Uh, so it did generate text for that. I I think it's pretty good. Um, the the question was why sixty minutes, and uh, it was arbitrary. And I don't think I quite captured what maybe Carson had in mind uh, with the business with. The, uh, doing something like the act timeout. I didn't understand that at first. Now I do understand what he's suggesting, but I don't think I quite I quite acted on that right. Um, so we could just talk about that a little bit. Um, I think number five is just, the other one is just fine. Um, uh, 
So pull request. Oh, some more pull uh, Do you don't want to discuss the issue? Or like read about start the issue? Sure, we can start uh, the issue. So the, the issue is, is uh, the issue is why 60 minutes, right? What, what was it based? There's no context for why 60 minutes and what the issue uh, is. And uh, I, I guess the point, the point is that if you've gone to find out what the extended, what the um, extended token length is, that you shouldn't assume that it has a value, uh, that it still has that value um, many minutes to hours later, um, particularly if it's uh, another node on the internet. Um, so the, the, the question is what, uh, what you don't want to go too often um, and you don't want to go too less often. So what is the right number? How should we set this? And so my opinion was that if the node is co-located, so it's in the same subnet, it's, you're directly connected to it, then you probably should assume that addresses can't change more often than your address um, and that's a good cache length time. So whatever your DHCP or, or router advertisement lifetime is, that's how long you could cache this information. Um, and then if it's on the internet, then I would say that if you looked it up with DNS, then whatever the time to live for the DNS result is, is a good upper limit on how long you can wait, how long you can cache that information. Because you can't, because you're not. If you don't look up the, uh, if you don't look up the, uh, the uh, the DNS name again, then you most likely can't get a different IP address and a different host. Um, of course, the host could change under the covers without you knowing, but uh, probably people shouldn't do that more often than they change their DNS value. That's what I would suggest. And if you still don't know, then. The suggestion was 30 minutes, 1800 seconds. Mm -hmm. And that's in the pull request. So yep. <clears throat> my suggestion was to make this explicitly a parameter um, using the parameter mechanism of uh, Coab so people know that they may want to change this among um, together with other things like act timeout and so on, if their network has some some specific timing requirements. Right. So I don't know what it means. So with the parameters, it's just you're adding a symbolic name to something. That's all I understand. Yes. Yeah. Um, it, it would be good to include some, um, if not 60 minutes, some uh, reference to potential usual uh, times, so the ACK timeout sounds like okay to me. By something concrete, maybe right. Well, no, the idea isn't that it's based on this other number. It's just another time and value that we have we can configure. Mm. And I don't know exactly how to write that text, and it doesn't seem like it should belong. It belongs in the uh, well, but it's in section two two two. Um, so it needs to create a new a new a new value. I, I'm. It seemed loath to me to create a value that someone has to figure out. Um, and um, if you can figure it out some other way, then I think you should do that, right? But mm -hmm. ah, okay. So So minimum and maximum is also, I think, important. So don't ask again within a half an hour. It can't change within the half an hour. But after a day, you should chat, you should do it again, regardless of, of whatever other numbers you had. That would be my suggestion, to have two numbers uh, for a minimum and a maximum if you don't know. Um, if you did get it from DNS, then you know after that DNS timeout, you should ask again. I don't know if that should that's highlighted should be uh, normative or not. 
I'm just not so sure. So um, um, some endpoints may have uh, IP addresses if it's IPv6 that are long, longer than one day. Oh, I'm like not saying I'm not saying it, anything. I, I'm not saying that that I'm not saying it can't be longer than that. And if and if you have a if you can't tell what the what the you can you might be able to guess what uh, a, a neighbor is by mm. your own lifetime, right? But if it's on some other part of the internet, you have no idea how long the addresses are valid at that end. And I, the yeah. concern is that you know colon colon two goes away and is replaced mm. by a new colon colon two which has a different, you know, version of the code and therefore has a different token length. Ah, right? okay, okay, okay. Okay. Yeah. And so so the idea is that if it's been more than a day since you checked, you should probably check again. Mm. Go okay. through the the trial and error process. Um if it's if it's in your if it's if it's an adjacent node like you're in the su same subnet, then the odds are it has the same lifetime that that you do. So if you have three week lifetimes, because that's what you got, or you know, year long lifetimes, then you could assume the neighbor has that long a lifetime too. There's a lot of logic to figure this out, but you know, on the other hand, you could just check every half an hour. It probably it hurts your battery, but it probably better than getting it wrong. I, I don't I, I I don't really think this is going to change that often, but um, I think it's a bit of a boogeyman. Um, and so they're reasonable default values. Yeah, it seems reasonable that if you check once a day, that that you know it's that's enough. Mm -hmm. um, the guy who's going to have this problem is got is in a lab situation, and he's got changing his equipment every every hour as he reboots and puts new code out. Yeah, if they are actually shaped as uh, new parameters at the fun here, those can be exactly the default values. Yeah, so I don't know exactly how the how we. I, I have to think of think about how to write that text with respect to like act timeout. I don't know how to. I'd have to figure out how to do that. If someone knows how to do that easily, it seems to be. It, it seems you've written in a particular way to call out that these are co-op uh, values, t uh, tunable values. Like I can ima ima imagining you really want to bring up the fact that this has to be a number sign defined somewhere in the code or something like that uh, to for an implementer that this should be tunable. The, the, this, the last sentence reads a bit strange, but anyway, that's uh, another story. Okay. I would, yeah, we can for all sure. have a revision for, for proofreading for non-native speakers. Sure. Okay. So, um, next item, I will, will my tab. Okay. So, um, go ahead. Oh yeah. So I actually sixty minutes. We just covered that. Um, that's what we just discussed. Sorry, spoofed response, the last issue. Uh so the text says essentially is trying to say that it might be that integrity protection on the um, stake token is in some rare cases unnecessary. Um, and and I think that, that that text in red that was trying to say that confused the situation. And so I rewrote that. Yes, and I like the, the gist, the statement that is being made here. Uh, of course, it will bring up the question, so why don't you make it a must then? Because it's local decision. Yes. Carsten, are you suggesting to write a line explaining that? or No, I'm, I'm just trying to, to anticipate uh, potential reactions to this change and uh, mm. uh, Michael has said how to defeat these reactions so right. let's, let's go ahead with this thing so I think we really should merge this now okay so you want me to merge this one yes 
<clears throat> okay, I click the button. So there is a double space in front of the that, but uh, we can fix that later. Okay. Oh no, it's two. There's two spaces after a comma. Yes. <laughs> and also, by the way, the why you guys were using the XML instead of the Markdown? Like, is there some historical reason I forgot about? Uh, it was or an distract? XML. I was already, was yeah. an XML. Okay. There was no Markdown. Okay. I didn't yep. didn't think I would con would fix that. The, the draft is from Klaus. Oh, okay. Yeah, he hates Mark. Klaus is an island. Mm. Okay. Okay. Uh, he hates Markdown. Okay, I don't tend to understand that point of view, but um, and so well, don't yeah, quote so... don't quote me. Maybe <laughs> not totally, but like he's used to XML, I suppose. Anyways, but that was it. issues on. Oh, sorry. So those are the ones that I thought were controversial that we could solve, um, and so. Uh, the other issues were don't fixes that I uh, or won't fix, and I need some some review for people to say to agree that that is the case, or to say, yeah, please fix it. Yeah, and we need text to say that say why we are not fixing it. Mm. Yeah, that's right. I think that that's really the the piece of work that is still missing. Okay, so I've taken up half an hour, so I'll I'll uh, pass to whomever is next. Yep, but maybe we will send we, we will send a reminder later to the mailing list to, for people to check these issues so that we can close them as soon as possible. And like Good. just add some rationale why we are not fixing those. Okay, so uh, resource directory now. Yes. The um, last can touches. I get... <laughs> Yeah. Uh, can I share the screen? Let's let's see if that works. Yeah, I should give you permission. Do you, do you need the special permission at the moment, or can you just try? Um, I'm trying. So, looks like it. Yeah. Okay. Um, Maybe it's not yet there. Okay. At least not for me. It says I'm sharing the screen. Uh, to me, it shows uh, is it starting to share content. Still thinking for me too. Same here. I mean, I can try running this in Chromium. Wait, wait, maybe I should. I don't know if I can make you presenter or something like that. Uh, no, you oh, are already, you already presenter. Presenter. Uh, it's, yeah. it's just that uh, we have the usual problem that when the presenter changes, the stream doesn't get set up properly. The rest of us have to uh, reload. Oh. Okay, um, does it help if I do this in, an, in a new session or is this counterproductive? No idea. And let me try quickly if that works all right. If not, um, so then I will stop sharing here. Reload didn't help for me, I think. Christian, did you stop sharing? Um, I stopped sharing. Sorry. Um, I, um, stopped. I stopped. I think he connected with another browser too, because I see three of them now. Two of them now. Okay, should should only be one or two of me. Um, do you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, we hear you well. Okay, and only one of me. We can um, hear you, yes. Okay, I'm trying to share here, but it doesn't really but look like it's doing any better. Um, okay, then maybe we just go with um, me pasting links to the. Um... I can, you know, we can go through the. Is, is it on only on the issue tracker? I think you need oh, to. It's, uh, it's, I think you it's need mix... to make your other you the presenter is the problem. No, no, he's the presenter already. Uh, but he logged in a second time, and the second time wasn't the presenter. No, no, it still uh, it shows there the icon. Okay. Um, any, anyway, if, I'll, I'll just paste you, paste over links when, when there's somewhere to go. Um, and if you could follow that, um, on, um, on an organizational, um, point, I unfortunately didn't, still didn't manage to write up pull requests for all the, what is it? Almost 2000 lines of, um, comment processing. 
Um, but there's a few points where I actively need a bit of assistance, and I'd like to go through those. And other than the last time, I'd go for the low hanging fruit first, and um, and and then go escalate to the to the harder ones. Um, so there's there's one um, I don't have really have on the, on the issue tracker, but um, we got a comment that. Um, on, on the on the paragraph from a system design point of view, the ambition is to design horizontal solutions that can enable utilization of machines in different applications depending on their current availability and capabilities as well as application requirements, thus avoiding silo-like solutions. Um, on the topic of this being buzzwordy without actually saying anything. Um, now I think I can help with the saying anything. The question is just um, do we want this buzz this level of buzzwordi buzzwordiness that I do agree with um, who was it? Um, Warren Kumari um, is there. Um, do we want to keep that in, or is this really just something that happened when someone was coming from a CEO presentation? Could you point to the paragraph just for a second? Um, just search for from the system uh, system design point of view. Yep, that one. Yeah, I, I never liked this part. If 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 we have any reason to kind of keep a few of these words in there to ensure that this is taken up well by by some target community that I'm currently not aware of, um, I'm happy to keep the buzzwords in. Otherwise, I just at least I mean, there there are statements in there that I think are valuable and that um, that contribute to why we are doing RD. But there you you have to know the buzzwords to to get through them. So I I'd I'd do some some rewording here. The question is, buzzwords in or out? I think I think just some rewording to ex maybe just mention that the discovery is an important feature and and, and that is important that it's it, it can be applied to any environment or any use case. I suppose. Can we simply delete know. that sentence? Yeah. So if if this sentence in the buzzwords has value. It would have to be in the introduction because the people that value those buzzwords won't get to section three. Can we delete that sentence? Um, so I would say it's inappropriate at this at this point in the document. I'm I'm fine with that. Um, I'll just make sure that we don't lose anything of where I see value. But yeah, yeah, you have to change the next sentence because it says such design. Sure. Okay, so that... I'm I'm still trying to find out what the sentence that we're deleting was trying to say. So I, I don't know what to replace such design with, but it, it's something like like uh, evolvability or heterogeneity or whatever, uh, and and uh, we can find out. Yeah. yeah. So so if basically was was my main question answered, I can come up with a pull request that that we can that that, that I can then then. Submit on the eventual mm -hmm. motion. Um, so next item is a question on the on the topic of DHCP and Slack. One is it is it pronounced Slack? I'm not sure. After after, after I find out that it's not Cuddle, um, I'm always a bit careful. Some people still like Cuddle. Um, it's yeah, I, I, think, I think it's okay. With a long air. Uh... <laughs> I I I, th I think Cuddle is cute. So anyway, um. On on that particular, I link I linked the issue in the chat. So if you could just open that up, um, pull, pull two six three. Um, the point here was that we presented Slack and DHCP as um, mutually exclusive, and that they could mm -hmm. only be used when basically they could only be used for discovery when they are also used for address assignment. And the point was that this is not the case, and the pull request already changes it to say that when DHCP is in use, immaterial of whether it's used for address configuration. Um, what I don't know, because I don't know Slack and DHCP well enough, is does this go the other way around as well? So do we need to say um, when Slack is in use um, or, or when neighbor discovery is avail available, this is provided by the D RDAO option, or is this something that can stay like this? Um, yeah. Or can the, the paragraph above 
because they like that, the, the item three. Well, the item three is about the case when we do not have DHCP. Well, the, the, not necessarily. It's about the case where we... No, the item three is about the case where we do not have DHCP. Okay. Oh. And then Slack is the only option. And then the, the, the logical consequences that you are using Slack. Okay. And for that, we have the RDAO, RDAO option. Okay. No, there, there's three cases. Yes. So, so um, address configuration can be done by Slack or DHCP. But in the case that it's done by Slack, you can have the OBIT set and you can also have DHCP v6 providing a, uh, a, a, an option. Mm -hmm. Yes, which means uh, that the, the two of the cases are exactly equivalent. The one case is you have DHCP and the other case is you have DHCP. So we right, right, but but the, but the case the, if, you have DHCP. But the if it's the case is not that whether address configuration of the network is right. performed by Slack. The the case is when O or, or M is are both zero. Then you have to use the RDAO option in the in the uh, in the AD. You can. You still don't yeah. have to. Okay, then that's the only source of it is what I'm trying to say. So you can always use RDAO with Slack. Mm -hmm. If you have DHCP, or if you don't have DHCP, you always can use RDAO. And if you have DHCP, you can also provide a DHCP option. So the concrete change here would be to say that uh, three, um, uh, the the resource directory address can be provided in the RDAO option. Yeah, you could say something like uh, the, yeah. uh, in the course of address configuration of the network uh, by Slack, it can be provided by. Well, actually, that, that's even that's not true. Just say yeah, it's, the, it's, the RDA option in neighbor discovery can provide that. Yeah, that's it's it's not it's not dependent upon whether the address configuration is done by the network is the point. Okay. Yes. And and Slack is available unconditionally and unconditionally on V6 networks, yes. Yeah. No. So R in... D R A's are available unconditionally on IPv6 yes. networks. Okay. Good. Then I know how to progress here. Um the next item is again not on not linked to a particular issue, but something that came up processing one of the, the already processed ones, or, or one one where never mind. Um, it's on the topic of replay replay protect, protection. Now I did uh, there is a pull request that says that replay protect, protection should be enabled, um, but the the way we usually at least in a um, in, in, in the HTTP world, um, handle co possibly conflicting changes is to ship with critical up with updates where we really want to ensure that we are on the same page, um, send if match options. When we do registration updates, we, re we don't really have that option because we never got a representation, a re recent representation of the thing we are updating. So let us say even if even if we dis if replay protection is disabled, if there is a request out there to say um, delete your registration and that request was um, black holed by a, by a person in the middle, that request would get replayed and when the same client registers again, um, that replay that thing could be injected would not even be a replay and because it's not making any assertion of on the current state of the um of the resource directory it would pass so the the, the actual two ways of mitigation are either to allow us to use if match or to introduce additional freshness requirements on the request those are probably for the resource directory um, not too important because really what's the things that we can change in a registration. Um, 
but we might want to consider this for more general applications that we describe, like PubSub and, and others. With our score, we don't have the problem because we, with our score, we have the response bound to the request. This is um, a DTLS only problem, right? No, not so. Um, um, not exactly. Um, this happens a bit in OSCore as well, but in OSC so in in DTLS, it's sufficient to swallow a message, and then it will be retransmitted as a new DTLS message, and that will be responded to, and the original DTLS um, message will not be um, kicked out of the replay window. Uh, with OSCore, this doesn't happen um till the complete request times out and the client tries again with a fresh request with a with a new sequence number so it's it's not that bad in oscore but it can still happen there but i we might expect that oscore um that that the case where a complete request times out triggers a more serious reevaluation of the of the world state by the client than just um, a, re a simple retransmission that is eventually successful as it happens in DTLS. But it's conceptually the same thing applies to OSCore as, as well. Because none of the requests we're sending have a precondition on. So, so the, the, the responses are bound to the requests, but the requests are not bound to the previous state, which is OK, because we generally expect reordering, just not when we are manipulating uh, resources where we in other cases, have an if match. So you would use the echo option. Um, using the echo option is something that would be an option, but for that, <coughs> really, the server has to know that it has some freshness requirements, and those are a bit hard to hard to grasp here. I mean, yeah, possibly even the <laughs> probably the echo option would even be a way to do this, but um, if it yeah, can, can, can we recommend that? Because th that's actually solving the problem. Not quite. Because in Echo, we allow that the client at any time may forget the Echo value in order to avoid the misuse of Echo as a cookie. And in that case, how would the server know that it's that? Hmm. I'll, I'll have to think that through. Yeah. A, fresh, a fresh Echo option. Yeah, so yeah. Any request that, that echoes that is fresh. Yeah. So so that would probably mean that the, the sequence of re register of, of registration updates is is bound into a sequence and is, is kind of it's ordered by the echo option. And if the yeah, that that might work. I think that should work, yeah. Yeah, I, I wasn't aware that <clears throat> there are kind of application level reasons to use the echo option. And um, so that, that uh, got me thinking here. I mean, yeah, we. So basically, the, the, the algorithm <clears throat> on the server side would be um, first define a freshness interval. So uh, a registration update is, is uh, fine if it uh, uh, actually has been um, issued within the last hour or so. And then if the, the client hasn't accessed the resource directory within the current DTLS connection within the freshness interval, uh, send back an echo option. And I think this would not even need to be time-based. This could be event-based. So basically, um, the, the the echo value is it's, uh, an echo value is good as long as there only registration updates happen, uh, like a plain lifetime refreshes happen, and only when a value is actually changed, then the old values are not good anymore. So this would be really really a, a more counter thing than a than than a time-based thing. Okay.
Um, I mean, this is the thing is for resource directory. This is probably not as critical as it's it will probably be for for other um, for other core applications. Right. So I can sketch this up for this case. It's just another change that will happen without that will happen very late in the process that has a very weak attack um, scenario. Do you think that this is still something that we can we can and want we can put in? I mean, I can at, at any rate I can sketch a. I can sketch some text for this, and we can then still later decide on whether or not to take it in. But yeah, yeah. Ba basically, it, it would require to to um, evaluate the the value for the attacker uh, of uh, keeping stale information in the resource directory, and if there is value to that then we have to prevent that attack. Hmm. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll put something in there along with the pull request. So the attack, Karsten, is the attack, is, is that the attacker can restore an entry in the directory that is potentially dead. Yes. Um, yeah, the restoring it, it can keep a registration alive for some yes. time unless the, unless the client puts it, it puts it, um, explicitly deletes it. And the other way around, the attacker can delete a registration that has previously deleted itself. So if a device always deletes its registration when it goes to deep, deep sleep, um, then one of those, um, deletions could be stored and Replay. used later to kill the registration uh, right after it came up that that's actually more 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 of an issue than um uh putting the you know a node that just disappears dies and doesn't renew and so it maybe expires and then the attacker can restore it that's I, it seems a weird i don't know what the attack is but being able to delete the registration <laughs> You know, arbitrarily, that really does seem like a concern. Yeah, and and actually, uh, reviving a registration does it also revive or bring back uh, existing other other I don't know like uh, observations from the in the case of Lightweight and for instance, the Lightweight oh. server and RD are collocated. No, it wouldn't bring anything back, right? It's just a registration entry. So at least not if the resource directory is in, in some way used as it's intended. It might do yeah. something like this for, for Lightweight M2M, but, mm -hmm. but observations surviving an IP address change um, is, is something very um, particular. Mm. And, and you mentioned that it, it would also, uh, or maybe I didn't get that right, it would also prevent uh similar registration from like from uh from the previous endpoint or not it would prevent what sorry sorry the, the, if if you revive the re registration so if if an attacker so i'm an I, i'm a co-op endpoint i register on rd i get the uh, location and then i i go idle for a long time and then someone else uh what was the expression it's not revive uh it's a uh, yeah, probably re keeps keeps the registration alive for longer than it should have been. Yeah, uh, can the previous endpoint still use that registration? For instance, yes, it, sending yes, a registration update. Yes, it can. Yes, it can. So, so the the attacker cannot steal the the identity, uh, steal the identity, or get any additional permissions. Mm. Um, it just it, it can just replay things that the the endpoint earlier said. So, mm. uh, pro probably the worst thing they can do is is um, inject the delete again. Mm -hmm. The injected only... delete again, as I said, the injected delete again is a real big deal. I'm just trying to think of yeah. the other yeah. case where, um, um, and 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 so if if there was a half solution that made deletes uh, not replayable but made ads replayable, um, so, so so if 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 some node deletes its entry and then goes into a deep sleep, um, and some 
and the attacker puts the entry back in. I, th I think then... the attacker can't even put the entry back in if it, if it was deleted. Um, ah. Okay, so it would have to it, be one that timed out or something. Yeah. Um, but there's a, there's a third class of changes that we don't we can't say much about yet because we don't have them. That is uh, changes to registration attributes. So the registration attributes we have now are pretty tame because either they can't be changed like endpoint and sector, or they are things like lifetime, which is probably changed rarely just as well. Um, but any registration up, um, attribute update could have this could suffer the same fate. But for lack of entries in that registry, we don't we can't anticipate yet what what the effect will be. If you're using DTLS, it seems like it's using replay protection is not that expensive. Re thing is, replay protection doesn't catch this really. Replay oh, protection. With, without replay protection, this is just even easier because you don't have to swallow the request and wait for the retransmit to go through and only have as many attempts as you've swallowed, but you can just replay and replay and replay. Um, so this is worse if replay protection is off, and it's worse in DTLS than it is in OSCore, um, but it can still happen. It just gets gradually harder as you go from DTLS without replay protection to OSCore. So detail having replay protection in the DTLS doesn't solve the problem is what I heard you just say. Yeah, it just makes it harder to exploit. Just makes it harder to exploit. Okay. That may be worth um, making more clear. Things I, I don't I don't mention this in here yet because I wasn't sure how how grave the problem is perceived really and what other mitigations we might have, and certainly just having DTLS replay protection is something we want as as we discussed last time we want to have in in co-op anyway because nobody is aware that this is off by default. Um, so, so I think this this change can probably stand on its own. The thing is just what do we make of the bycatch? Yeah, I think the, the important thing is that we have a mitigation in, in the uh, form of the echo option. And now <laughs> we are creating another normative reference. I'm hating myself. I mean, it's not like I'm not overdue for for document update in the in a similar phase for for ERT. So my my gut feeling is that they, those probably go through to through at the same time anyway. If not ERT a bit faster because it hopefully gets not that much comments. But what's yeah. the status of echo request take? Um, revised ID needed, as I remember. In the working group or in the ISG? Um, it's it's it, after, yeah. after the review, Sorry. and I remember replies from the authors to Barry and his latest comments. So I think it's on Barry now. OK. Uh, Maybe we should remind Barry. I, <laughs> I, think, I, think it's, I think it's on me, um, but no, I no, Christian, I think it's on Barry. So, okay. but we need to need to nudge him. I think. Okay. I think I wrote the last mail, and uh, perhaps I, I should have write, written it differently. It wasn't straightforward to answer, so that's probably why he hasn't. Okay. Answered. So yeah, we need to get back to him. I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but I think we'll see a bit more when I've put this into text that um I'll then mail the make. Ma um, mail mail about the PR to the list because this is something that really affects more than just RD and I'd like to have a few few eyes from outside the, the usual group on this. Um, so if there's no more questions or points on this, um, then there's there's one um, one point that I think is is a bit easier again. 
Um, that is the topic of commissioning tools. So we had a comment on the or a question really about whether the this um, whether the actions of commissioning tools are a one-time event or or happen more often. And I do agree that we the way it's phrased, um, it looks a lot like those commissioning tools act in the original setup phase and then go completely away. But then again, we do say that. Um, registrations are soft state in the resource directory. So if the commissioning tools tool goes away for too long, then this soft state will fade just as well. Um, and Pete, um, is Peter here today? No, oh, no, I don't see him. Anderson. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I talked to him an hour ago, but he's not in this meeting. <clears throat> okay. So this is probably something that I'll have to ask Kim again because he's as I understand, the person with the most interest in commissioning tools or with the most experience, probably. Um, does any of you have an idea of, of how those commissioning tools will be used in the, in the time scales of resource directory? Uh, my understanding is that the commissioning tool arrives with the installer of some kind. Um, it may be his phone or maybe uh, attached to their phone um, and then it leaves never to return yeah that would be bad so I don't I was surprised I didn't know this text so I was surprised to, to see that it would have to do some kind of a uh, a uh, keep alive or something is what you're saying yes renew the, the, the thing well we do have infinite length Registrations, right? No, that's a that's an extension that I'm proposing, but that's not in the RD. Oh, it's not authorized. So the commission <clears throat> tool is used to authorize the additions of nodes, name them, and name their services. At, I would think the commissioning tool would then pass on a credential to the node, such that it could actually maintain its own entry. Um, if it so, if it if it happened that way, we don't really allow. I mean, it might, but we don't, and, and yeah. Hmm. So this, is, but just to <clears throat> clarify, the, so this is just so that the um, registration update we are talking, right? Yeah, the, the, yeah. Okay. For the devices that needed the commissioning tool to begin yeah. with. Is there oh, an okay. issue in GitHub on this question? Um, not yet, because I, it's, it's kind of just occurred to me while processing those. Um. Okay. If you write an issue, if you write yeah. an issue and assign it to me and Peter, I will, 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 I'll make sure that Peter and I answer this question because I've been through this process okay. with him as well. Uh, on, and I see this is lighting. So, uh, yeah. And maybe we'll get ESCO as well to have an opinion. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Um, that brings me to, to two remaining points. Um, one is the one where I've um, started around a lot in the last meeting on the topic of author of how do we bind authorization to resources. And given that this has come up implicitly in one of the comments, this um, I, I now have a better example for this. Unfortunately, still without without um, much text here. Um, but if you um, Go, could you go to where is it the discover uh, the URI discovery and basically just above section five? Yep. So um, one thing that we have in the um, yeah the locations. Where is it exactly? Sorry, I'll just try to find it myself. That's probably faster. Um, yeah. Oh. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so in 
in 4.3 on page, page um, okay, like you don't have pages, um, where it says, um, and, and not limit the set of discovered URIs to those hosted at the address used for discovery. Not limit the set, yeah. So what, what we have been allowing for some time is that the that in discovery basically you are directed to a directory some at some other host. Now in connection with all the authorization that we now more explicitly um, prescribe to happen, where the endpoint verifies that the credentials of the RD are good to, for example, keep its links secret to some to some to be defined group. There, the client relies on the resource to be actually be a directory, a resource directory. Um, so, imagine a case where you have a border router that is queried for discovery, and that border router has in its uh, well-known core a link to the actual resource directory. This would this would be aligned with the with the lookup recommendations, and there the border router would say. There is at co-op colon slash slash rd.example.com slash rd. There's a resource directory. And then the client connects to that host, verifies that the host's credentials are good to be a trustworthy resource directory, and posts its links there. So far, so good. You still yes. with me? Yeah, okay. Um, now, if that um, resource directory just happens to have, say, a message of the day, which is completely unrelated to the resource directory, but on the same host, that might live on slash MOTD and be displayed to whoever logs into that server. If the border router now um, put into this discovery step, not uh, uh, example.com slash, uh, slash RD, but slash MOTD, the client would just as well go to the same host, verify the host credentials, but um, post its data to a resource where it would be sent out to whoever happens to be around. Um, who did something wrong there? Or what went wrong there? And this is happening here in discovery because we don't protect the discovery steps because we say that Discovery doesn't need protection because that later the RD will be authorized, will, will, will have its author, authorization checked. But it seems not to quite cut it. And the same problem is showing up again when people are when people want to trust links found in the resource directory. Yeah, so the, the authorization should be for the resource, not for the host. But at least, I mean, how how does that happen in practice? I mean, if, we'll, if I open a TLS, TLS connection, I get a certificate that says something about the host. Um, if I establish an ACE context with it, then I get a token that um, then I get a token, and with that token, build up an OSCore context, and I could easily be allowed to post to MOTD in that OSCore context. So. How how would that authorization be bound to that resource? Well, of course, the first mistake was to use certificates. Um, but um, yeah, I don't know. Um, probably we need to write up this example in a little bit more detail uh, so we can say what should happen. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm, I can I can do that. If we don't have any any fast answers, then it's probably better to think about it and come to good conclusions than than do anything quick. Yeah, but the the underlying observation is that different resources offered by a single server may have different security properties. Yeah. Uh, so doing an authorization that is uh, host based only is not going to work, and that's exactly one of the the biggest. Uh, attack mechanisms for OAuth, by the way.
Good to see we're not alone. So, so you know, in the OAuth space, the answer is don't have don't have resources with different kinds of uh, um, authorization on the same host. You should just make up some more names and put them in different places. Um, and you know, doctor, it hurts when I do this, so don't do this. But I guess it just needs to be spelled out that you that this is a problem, as I think. I mean that that basically shifts the the that that basically shifts things that we in all our co-op examples treat as hosts into or uh, treat as resources and entry points for services into into dedicated hosts, um, which means that that for example we need to maintain much more we, we might need to maintain many more OSCORE contexts than we previously than we naively would have to. Uh, a bit of a naive and simple question. <clears throat> this is not something you could fix with some attribute uh, for the resource, right? So there, there is one fix, that, which is basically what I what I've been suggesting in in the in the other application. That is that if um, if a client relies on any properties of a res properties of a resource for for something that matters and phrasing that will be the hard part, then it will have to verify that information by looking it up from the well-known core of that host again. So th this is a place where we could put the attributes in a way that the client may trust them. In, in the concrete example, that would mean that the client, after having found the link to what it thinks of as the resource directory, to go to the host, which, which, it, authentic which it authenticates, um, query its well-known core file for just that very single record, possibly even without getting more than a few bytes as a response, if we phrase that adequately, and then rely on the information which is now authoritative. In the application of the resource directory, of course, that would mean that if you discover something through the resource directory, in many cases, you would then need to verify that information via that host, but that will spare you the hassle of going through different, yeah, of, of going the, the OAuth way probably. So um, it was just said that, so if you made up new host names, you'd have to establish more OS core contexts. Now I'm trying to imagine a situation where there were some other credential, I don't know what Karsten has in mind exactly here, um, that was on a per resource basis um and there's you know things above co-app can do that um but wouldn't that still mean that you'd have multiple uh contexts you wouldn't be reducing the number of contexts at all um you might so, so if 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 we had a situation where for example the the authorization information about the host says not that this host is generally trusted to serve a res serve as a resource directory as a, as a confidential resource directory, but this particular resource on that host serves as a resource as a um, as a con trustworthy resource directory. Then the client would get the information when it obtains the authorization information, and see the mismatch and bail. Yeah. So essentially, the authorization information for the host would say you can trust this host to publish. Uh, valid well-known core, and then the host would say, oh, by the way, that resource is a resource directory, and uh, then the client would be able to use that uh, information to to provide details to the authorization. Mm, I roughly like that, yeah. That, that's just not how things work right now, I think, but maybe we can make them. Um, or at least, I mean, pro this is probably not something we will solve for RD, but at least kind of find the pain points and offer band-aids until, until we have something better.
Okay, um, that, that gives me a way forward here. And the last item is again um, something that I'd like to look over with you from, from the issue tracker. That's pull request 258 if that's faster to, to navigate to. And if you that's if that's probably best viewed as files changed with the with the um, changes below each other. You yeah. So that's the um, that's the text I came up with for the for the that default policy we talked about last time. Um, I don't know if you. So there is still a bit more language about particular certificates in there than I would like to have, but to me this this should be this for me this should roughly capture what I think is a good um, is a good default policy, um, especially on on the topic of the 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 different um, subject alternative names. Um, I'd like to have this this uh, reviewed again. Because I think so. So we talked about this, but I th I'm not sure I captured it correctly. I, I haven't. Fully read the whole thing. Um, in principle, it looks good. Maybe we can um, show a hands of, of those who would volunteer to have a look uh, to this part uh, rather soon, or sooner rather than later. Feel free to just comment on the chat or just say something. And if you have already read it, also say something, please. That's probably hard given that I was very late in. Pushing this. Ah. Well, I will have a look, and maybe one more would volunteer to uh, have a look. Maybe by tomorrow or at the latest on Monday, so that you can, so that Christian can move forward. Christian, would, are you um, thinking of particularly one person to review? Um. Sadly, yes. Yeah. So I will certainly read it. Thanks. Thank you, Carson. So um, that for me that concludes the big open issues where I where I know that I would where I needed active input. Um, I might still come up uh, something might still come up when I process the rest, but I think. Um, I can make everything of, of everything of the comments into either a, we do it like this because or into a pull request. And I've already started um, merging pull requests as well to get things into a more consistent shape again. So my plan for action would be that unless something is like this really, really something where I'm where I'm very um, unsure about whether it's the right thing, I'd go about um, merging things in over the next few days. Then um, send the send a message to the to the uh, group that this is something I'd submit w along with the point-to-point -point responses, and a few days later, um, upload and um, and um, mail the mail um, mail the commenters what the status is uh, now if one of those so there's we we do have two items that might take a bit longer um those probably that is the the echo mitigation and the topic of um authorization i probably won't mo merge them in there but they don't they don't pertain to right on point to, to particular comments that um that we got either so at least we can have a version that addresses the comments that came up and then still 
let them know that there are things that we are pondering that that might be good to include or see what the status is by then. What was the tentative dates that you uh, were thinking of before? I'm, I'm talking about uploading to the GitHub repo, like uh, next week? Or? So the the, uh, the version in the GitHub repo is something that I'd like to have on kind of Tuesday or so. Mm -hmm. So I've gotten into this whole writing process now. I think I've spent yeah quite a bit of time yesterday and mm -hmm. today on, on processing this. So I think I'm, I should be through by the weekend. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. Okay. So, um, and from the meeting today, there were a few items that I think people could probably provide feedback if they prioritize it by Monday at latest, and then maybe we can, by the end of next week, optimistically, we could submit uh, the new version. If not, then the next one, I suppose. So, so as I said, we, I don't, I don't expect that the updated version would include the the top the, the echo topic and the no 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 yeah so so that that should be possible that sounds possible yeah mm -hmm. okay that's very good thank you Christian this is great work and and I, and I think we all love it that it's very well organized in the GitHub by the way I think it makes it so much easier thanks thank you Christian. Uh, so um, I think that closes the meeting for today. Any other comments, any other thoughts? Well, I have a, <clears throat> a suggestion for the uh, resource directory document. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think we should make Christian first author. I agree. I agree completely. Yes, plus one. Thank you. Should we, um, because not everybody's in the meeting, a few have left uh, right now, maybe we should send a comment on the mailing list later. And, well, it's for uh, the regular uh, chairs to decide, so... Uh, oh, is it for us to decide? Yes. I thought RFC it was between the, between the authors. RFC 2418 makes this very explicit. Of course, it, it's nice to, to tell the authors that, yes. Mm. Yeah, I mean, uh, as far as I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it sounds uh, obvious. Um, but we can maybe send one email to the authors and explain and, and just mention that. Yeah. I don't think they will complain. It's nice to check, but chairs can even remove and add authors yeah. if they have reasons to. <laughs> okay. Okay. So thank you guys for the time again, and um, see you next week. No, not again. Don't see you next week. See you in a couple of weeks. <laughs> um, well, some of you, maybe. <laughs> Ciao. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye.